Good evening, race friends and race fans. What's up? Welcome back to the 191st ROM Hack Race. It's good to see everybody. It's Saturday night. Get comfy and hang out with us. We're going to race through another really cool Super Mario World ROM Hack Kaizo level that uh, no one's ever seen before. If you're new here, the racers have no idea what they're in for. You have no idea what you're in for. Heck, I don't even know what I'm about to see. And uh, we're all going to hang out and have some fun. For this, the 191st ROM Hack Race, uh, we have a special, we have something special. This is a standard level, but standard in a strange kind of sense. This level is rated E. Not E for everyone, but E on the Gbreeze, I believe, came up with it. The original um, Kaizo, not just ROM Hack difficulty chart. And this one is rated E for Long Gauntlet Level, requiring intensive learning all along the level. It is not pixel perfect, but requires utilizing advanced techniques. And if you haven't seen Standard, I think you're in for a treat. There is a lot to like about the Standard format, and there's just as much difficulty and nuance and interesting stuff. It's just expressed in a different way. Uh, this level, Pretzel Planes, from Team Pretzel tonight, we will wait to reveal... Uh, all the members of Team Pretzel, but Doc has given me a really good list, and uh, there are some very cool names in this one. So get ready. A long gauntlet level, a little bit different, a little bit different than what we usually have, but uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I know the racers are up to it. We got RB Pimlico in the upper left to start out. We got Halcyon in the upper right, Ender of Games in the lower left, You Fail Me in the lower right. And you can check the leaderboard anytime in chat with exclamation leaderboard command. Big, big shout outs to the scouts tonight for letting us know who's in the lead. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to rotate everybody through. There are more than four racers. We'll be able to rotate everybody through and you'll be able to see all the clears. This is, uh, as, as we've mentioned before, um, you know, romhackraces.com. You can check out the website if you want to learn a little bit more about us and what we do. We do these every week. So feel free to bop that follow button if you're having fun. And uh, these races are consistency and one-shots. I say it over and over again. Uh, for those that don't know, it's a sort of a battle between consistency at obstacles you already know in order to get you chances at obstacles you don't know in order to pass. Uh, anytime you could supplement that with a good sight read of a particular obstacle and gain yourself a little bit more knowledge, even if you don't actually clear the level. So the racer in the best position will hopefully change uh and even the racer that's in the lead uh normally does not have a safe lead and so i'll try to give you the play-by-play -play and bring you you know just tell you about the dynamics of the race kind of how these things work if you have any questions or just you know something i didn't cover or you want to learn a little bit more please feel free to ask in chat that's always cool to do i can read chat and uh stay up to date on that thanks to everybody for dropping by i hope you're all having a, a good saturday Getting ready for another fun ROM hack race. We'll be ready to go shortly. So uh, get some, you know, we'll get some popcorn and get comfy. I was gonna say grab a blanket, but it's it's kind of hot out here. So maybe maybe turn the AC on. Grab a grab a cold drink. I hear they really get you slowing. Oh, I'm Glitch Cat, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. I'm sure most people already figured that out. But in case you didn't, hi, I'm Glitch Cat. I'll be bringing you the the play by play. We are off. It is time for a race. Pretzel Plains. This is one of the levels of all time. It sure is. RB Pimlico, Halcyon, Ender of Games, You Fail Me, starting us out. Thank you all so much for the follows. We really appreciate that. We have some special ROM Hack Race emotes if you uh, care, to, care to drop a sub, too. But we got a race, so let's do it. Pretzel Plains. Oh, geez. Now, keep in mind, I also don't know what we're about to experience here. I am also sight-reading commentary. So, as, as we mentioned, this is a standard level, and so you're not going to see obstacles that are necessarily as tight as you would in a Kaizo. But uh, keep your eye on RB Pimlico right now in the upper left with a pretty good sight read right now. Things in these levels maybe could be a little bit slower, could be a little bit more adaptable, uh, but are going to be very difficult. And if you think that standard just means a walk in the park, you need to play more standard. That's all I'm going to say. Right off the bat, um, you see the racers jumping over that big wall of floating question blocks. Nice job from Ender of Games there, just clipping right through. Um, you can Mario can clip inside those if you're. Yeah, it's like the um, red block from Bowser's Castle that turns on the light. 
uh, you can also clip a pixel of your foot on that. So that's how they're getting through. They're doing a little clip jump and uh, just kind of mashing the button to get up through there. But standard hacks tend to be a challenge of fundamentals. Uh, very often, you fail me with a with a good grasp of fundamentals. Now here's the lower right hand corner. You fail me on a read right now. Germ dove though at the same place. Germ dove. Oh, I think we needed a uh, gray platform there. But uh, germ dove in the upper right now. Most progress. Oh, a chuck gate. I don't know. This this we have seen more and more stuff that blurs the line between standard and Kaizo. They're sort of borrowing off of each other's homework more and more these days, which I think is pretty cool. Oh, wow. Germdove on some reeds right now. This is great. Keep your eye on the upper right-hand corner. Germdove is taking a commanding lead here. RB Pimlico, though, not far behind, but they go down at the chuck gate. You fail me trying to catch up in the lower right, but it is all RB Pimlico right now. Standard levels give you a, a lot of opportunities for sight reads to beat an obstacle on your very first attempt look at that going right through the flames germ dove excuse me germ dove right now in the upper right on a huge read but halcyon in the lower right could be a little farther remember this is a gauntlet level so it is going to be a long way to the end wow keep your eyes on the right right now both germ dove and halcyon are sight reading this right now and boy this is a tense moment for both of them because a mistake is gonna lose is gonna make them have to go back and do it again and not being able to complete the level what they want is the most amount of knowledge a racer will benefit here halcyon and ender house or germ dove sorry germ dove and oh germ dove takes the death it's all halcyon right now so germ dove has that amount of knowledge and it's halcyon's job right now to try to get more knowledge the racers don't actually know where each other is in the level but speaking in terms of the dynamic here that's playing out, we're looking for Halcyon to accumulate more knowledge. Maybe that's a pipe in there for them to go in? Maybe not. Halcyon is really taking their time here, which is probably a, a, a smart strategy, given that they'll have to get back to this point if they die. Meanwhile, Germdove trying to make it back, and this is where consistency really comes into play, because Germdove knows all this stuff, but can they be consistent enough and Halcyon with the patience, look at this. Keep your eyes glued to the lower right corner. Halcyon is on the read of a lifetime right now. Ouch. Ouch. That That is tricky. That really takes the difficulty up a notch in that section. Having to go for the P-Speed or the P-Switch timer. Because you can no longer afford to hesitate and wait. You have to just try to read that. Good effort. But yeah, but now Halcyon has learned a little bit more. And that does put them in the best position right now as they try to get back because every other racer is going to be presented with the same problem, right? Either one-shot that P-Switch obstacle or die the same way Halcyon did, learning nothing. So Halcyon is in the best spot right now, but that could be overturned in an instant if somebody could get the read. Really, really cool stuff going on here. If anyone really... um wants to learn a little bit more about these mechanics or anything, let me know. Uh, it would be a little easier for me tonight if folks asked questions because there's a lot going on. A lot of this is pretty standard SMW behavior, and that's what you tend to get uh, with a with a standard type of level, uh, to put it in John Madden style. Uh, the hopping flames leave little dangerous fires in their in their wake, so they'll, you don't want to touch the little fires that they leave behind them but you can spin jump on the main little hopping part of the fire you fail me in the lower left hand corner trying to not fail right now because they are back at the p-switch section and this is big knowledge and a big chance to make a move here and take the lead from halcyon halcyon they're working their way back working their way back wow you fail me really trying to trying to brain this out trying to oh yikes well all right they didn't quite get the knowledge but we'll see tough move there 
are a lot of the advanced techniques that would make a level like an E rating ones that Kaizo players would know. One would certainly hope so, given that these kinds of techniques are foundational to some parts of Kaizo. So I don't think there's any tech here that players, Kaizo players would be unfamiliar with. I think, if anything, what, what tends to mess them up in a level like this is more that some Kaizo players are used to very linear, single-solution kinds of obstacles where you just go and do the next thing, and then you land and do the next thing and do the next thing, and this gives you a lot of freedom of movement. Freedom to move around and wait and hesitate, find the opening, and that freedom can mess up a player if you've only trained on the linear, very regimented kind of obstacles that Kaizo has. Look out for Halcyon. Halcyon in the lower right has gotten back. They've got the P-Switch. They're up. And now they get a second chance. So that's what that knowledge does, right? Because Halcyon had that knowledge. Here they are again. Second P-Switch. But the Chuck is in the way. Oh, this is terrible. What are you going to do? They made it. Wow. Okay, that was, that was by some frames. Halcyon on a read right now. Beautiful drop kill for that Chuck. This is really great, but now Halcyon ah, needs to move. Needs to move fast. They knew it. That was that was good hustle, as they say in, in soccer. Good hustle from Halcyon. And again, Halcyon gets the knowledge. So Halcyon maintains the lead because they know what's coming up more than any other racer on the board right now. I feel like Kaizo 1 is closer to standard rather than modern Kaizo. I, yeah, you know, I haven't really thought of it that way, but yeah, I, could, I can definitely see that. There, there, there is a case to be made for, for that position. So again, this level is rated E for a long gauntlet level. Standard level with long gauntlets and advanced techniques. So kind of just, I honestly, this is what the difficulty slightly under Kaizo looks like. And here goes RB Pimlico, upper left-hand corner, trying to get through that P-Switch obstacle. A lot of the difficulty in this level, too, does come from the fact that the players aren't allowed to bank any progress. And that's why reads and one-shots are really valuable here. Because knowledge, as we learned from Captain Planet, you know, knowledge is, is the way. And, uh... Because they can't actually save a checkpoint, they're just going to have to rely on knowing, you know, what's coming up. Germdove dealing with that Chuck Eight. RB Pimlico, yo, just thinking about it. That's a, honestly, it's a smart play. Consistency. Well, honestly, consistency or reads could could win it here, and that that's what makes these kind of races really interesting. I think standard, sometimes more than a Kaizo level, a standard like this. Here goes Halcyon in the lower right. They've got the switch. They've got the knowledge, so watch out. RB Pimlico and you fail me at the same section. Oh, no, but Halcyon's got a problem here. They got it. Nice jump. Nice jump. They kicked that naked Koopa over. And it was blocking the path, but they made that with a really nice trick of momentum. Nicely done. Oh my word. RB Pimlico in a rough situation here on the upper left, but Halcyon. Can they make the reads? Halcyon? Oh my word. Oh my word. The presence of mind. That's a well deserved H. Good checkpoint from Halcyon. RB Pimlico going down in the P-Switch. The actual freaking presence of mind to grab the other grab block. Because because they might need it. Be, because you, you don't know, right? You have no idea. You might actually need that. The presence of mind on a P-Switch timer during a race to grab the extra, the, the extra grab block. Even though they didn't need it, that was just really brilliant presence of mind. And yeah, it almost cost them. It almost cost them, but they would have gone down in a spectacular way for, for trying to get that P-Switch. That was very sharp. What in the world is this? 
What what in the world? What in the world is happening here? Uh you're all watching the same thing I'm watching right now. I uh don't know. But these clouds are acting as one ways and the uh tan circles are sprite destroyers. Looks like Halcyon has a good idea. Yeah. Breaking the two blocks by moving around and opening the section. Open it, opening the way. So Halcyon definitely just kind of taking their time right now. Oh, was that a cheese? Aha, they cheesed it. That Oh, no, they didn't cheese it because those Lakitus are throwing spinies. Nicely done. So this is this is really big for Halcyon right now. All all they all they have to do is uh keep keep going. But look at the knowledge that they're able to accumulate, right? This is all this is stuff that all the other racers are going to have to learn. So yeah, the strat for this section is to take these shells, avoid contacting the tan circle while you're holding the shell because it'll just destroy it and kick the shell into the blocks in order to open the on-off switch. What in the high Mari heck is this? Now, this is a fantastic level. I really like this. I think I'm glad that there is a sort of a standard standard renaissance happening. I'm pleased to see it and uh, I definitely think players would do well to practice more standard. So who was all involved in the making of this? That's a secret we haven't revealed yet. Would you like to know? Germ Dove trying to figure out what this what is going on here. So yeah, so this was a, a collaborative, a collaborative endeavor from several makers. You made this? I made this. Yeah, that's the thing, right? You know, people like, no, no I don't, I don't mean to, no offense. I seriously mean no offense, but. Standard presents a different set of challenges and obstacles and solutions, physical solutions. There's Louis Doucet, I'm sorry, excuse me. Louis Doucet, lower left, also making it to the checkpoint. Sorry, it is uh, Louis and Halcyon right now, the bottom of the screen, battling it out. Louis getting a shell stuck in true Louis Doucet style. But standard presents a different set of challenges. And uh, sometimes Kaizo players might find that their normal tricks aren't working. Look at that though, Louie cheesing that section by not going around the loop and just throwing the shells in the corner there. I wonder if they think that's just what you have to do. See, Halcyon is like taking the shells around on the circle, but Louie figured out that they could just throw them through the edge. Pretty clever. Known, known cheese meister Louie Doucet. No wins yet, but Louis Doucet in the lower left and Halcyon in the lower right with the most progress. Louis' strat is working, but sometimes he does get those shells caught. Yeah, I, I feel like Louis definitely knows that this isn't quite what you do, but they're going for it because, in a way, it's faster. I mean, think about it. You know, if, if you can come up with a strat during a race that will save you 10 seconds per attempt... That's, that's, that's money in the bank. RB Pimlico down at the P-Switch, though. Ouch. I like to see that we have a tighter race, though. Louis and Halcyon both kind of neck and neck right now.
Also, like, I hope you're having a good night. Thanks for making Rom Hack Races a little part of your Saturday evening. We do these every week, 8 o'clock. If you're having fun, give that follow button a boop. Come join us anytime. You can check out romhackraces.com for more information. There is a way to see the rankings, exclamation leaderboard. But since there are no completions yet, there will be no names. Yeah, I saw that. Louie might be trying to go for an extra shell. Louis does Louie does go for cheese. If there if if Louis is always kind of trying to think outside what the level wants, sometimes that works, sometimes it tends to create I mean that that's the that's the double edged sort of cheese, especially in a race situation, is you might end up trying so hard to cheese something, um and you wind up just wasting the time for that. Halcyon, this is now a read. Halcyon in the lower right. A brand new section they've never seen. Good presence of mind. Yo, tossing the key up. Just playing it safe. They need that key on the on-off switch. Oh! Yikes. Didn't didn't play it safe at that moment. A, an up throw spin jump would have been a safer play there, but I think they were trying to rush it a little bit. I'm glad people want to make standard levels. Here goes Louie. Oh, uh, never mind. There is a, uh, there, there, there's a kind of a standard hack renaissance happening right now. And I, 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 I for one support it. You know, I'm, I, I play Kaizo, but I, I'm, a, I'm a huge advocate for standard hacks and standard hack makers. It's not, uh, it's not standard versus Kaizo. You know what I mean? I, I think there's, you know, may, maybe low key. I don't mean like there's like a, there's like a battle going on, but you know, like it's, it's not like that. It's Kaizo. Oh, well I play Kaizo standard is blah, blah, blah. You know? And then the standard makers are like, oh, well you can't, you can't appreciate it, you know? And like both people are right, right? Kaizo is really tough, but standard is to be appreciated and Halcyon. Nice try. It is really Halcyon and Louie right now, just blow for blow. They get a little bit farther, Louie gets a little farther, Halcyon gets a little farther. Neck and neck right now. Louie Doucet in the lower left and Halcyon in the lower right. Currently in the lead. Germdove in the upper right, though, trying to make it three. Nice try. Ah! Louis got a good timing for that bullet. Bouncing on a bullet, like, waiting for a cannon to shoot a bullet that you bounce on at a particular moment is a tough trick of timing. One thing you can do is, like, in order to get the timing for a bullet cannon shot is, like, Wait, like, the ca you're standing there, and then the cannon shoots a bullet, and then wait for that bullet to go off screen, and then count until the next one shoots. Like, one, two, three, four, five. Usually they shoot on five or six, so you can kind of, like, count it out that way. You fail me, though, in the upper right, looking for uh, maybe a checkpoint, getting some deep runs. Oh yeah, you fail me playing like they know what this level has. Oh, excuse me for one moment. I just need to inform everyone that my cat Mallow is here and wants my attention and is wonderful. Louis Doucet in the lower left. Big reads. This could make the difference. This is where Halcyon died last time. Louis Doucet. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Halcyon got farther than this. Right, this is where Halcyon died last time. And Louis is through. This could be it. Big reads. What's it going to be? Louis Doucet. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. They have learned. Louis has learned something important. 
Oh, that's a cool obstacle. I see how that works. That's a cool obstacle. You have, yeah, you have to keep jumping on the slopes in order to not despawn the shell. That's a cool obstacle. I really like that. Uh, we are going to do a, uh, well, we're going to wait a little bit, but want to reveal the makers for tonight. Team Pretzel put this level together for us. We really appreciate their efforts. Uh, we, we will go ahead and reveal the makers. Doc gave me the okay. Uh, Haraga, Ampersam, E-Man, uh, Yope, uh, El Elus, the Java Brew, uh, Beb, B E B N Leg, and Led Luigi. So a big collaborative effort tonight to make a couple screens in this, and we really, really appreciate that. Thank you, everybody, for a stellar level. Louis Ducey killing that spiny with the uh, with the throw. Oh my gosh, Louis, Louis, what in the? Oh, you know, I get it. No, I get it. Louis is actually doing this for a safety move. As long as Louis is up there, that piranha plant isn't going to spawn. So in a way, it's actually safer. Yeah, it's safer to try for that key jump. That's pretty swag there, Louis. Louis do say, hey, back again. And yeah, now Louis with the knowledge, taking the lead from Halcyon. Okay, hanging out right in the middle. Yep, by standing in the middle... The shell isn't going to go off camera too far. And Louie just watching out for that camera position. Watching out for those slopes. And there's more. Okay, Louie with a bomb timer. Kicking it forward to reset it. That's good presence of mind. That up toss. Great reads. Oh. Oh my gosh. What? I'm speechless. That was a phenomenal jump. That was that was actually a phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal jump. That was really, really good. Please clip that. That was a phenomenal jump to win it. Absolutely amazing. That was that was style and skill like I am honored to see. That is great. I am glad to live in a time where we get to watch the gameplay from such titans as Louis Ducey. That was a spectacular jump. Was that cheese? I don't even know. I honestly don't even know. Like, were, were you supposed to just die in that pit and something else would happen? I actually have no idea. I honestly can't even tell you. The makers would have to tell you that. No idea. So Louis Ducey, with the consistency, taking it out from under, uh, taking it out from under Halcyon. Is that it? Is that it? There is an invisible floor. I guess we'll find out when the next racer gets there. That was such a good jump. That was like the horizontal distance of that jump, given the ceiling, is the farthest amount of regrab you could have possibly made. That that was if if you clip that as an example of just like a stellar regrab. That the clutch moves where it counts. That was really good. That was really good. I try to celebrate the achievements of all the racers. Everybody's doing splendidly. Um, but it, in particular, that was a really, really good move from Louie. Yeah, so even yeah, so right, so even if Louie would have missed that jump, they still would have won the level. That was freaking stellar. That was stellar. I've seen I've seen some good some good reads and stuff. Uh, and that is that is four in a row. Uh, Louis Ducey now working on the uh, working on four in a row. Uh, the record would be seven. If someone would get seven in a row, they would I think tie Nexus for the uh, weeks in a row world record. Oh, was that five? Well, okay. So Louis so Louis Ducey now looking for the actual the actual rum hack race streak record. In a in a week or two, we'll we'll see how it goes next week. If Louis can uh, keep the uh, keep the six six Pete. The last attempt at that was Halcyon. They had six. Yeah, Nexus Nexus has the record at seven weeks in a row. Uh, Halcyon almost got there at six weeks in a row. 
And Louis now building up a streak. Halcyon looking for that up throw. And everybody else on the screen, B2, you fail me. RB Pimlico working on the first section. Such a good example of reads and how the sight read really factors in to to a race like this. That even though even though Louis came from behind, and at one point Louis and Halcyon, here goes B2 for the P switch section. Uh, even though at one point Louis was behind Halcyon by being consistent and just like getting chances at that and reading that last obstacle, they were able to make it through. Oh my gosh. Oh no, B2. B2, there it was. That was it. Those death blocks there are spicy. Spicy people eater. Halcyon, lower right. Ah, about to learn. About the shell. Nice uh, slope control there. Look at those tight little left rights to maintain position and not slip off that slope. Halcyon, all right. Now here it is, here's the chance. Ha! And that and that's rough, right? We're watching good players, keep that in mind. You're watching talented players play other talented players, but Halcyon didn't get the read there. Yeah, you can see, oh, they're trying to clip through. Oh, good try, Halcyon. They might get it. Are they gonna get it? Uh, there's an H, yo, you fail me. You fail me with the H. Well done. Well done. Oh, they got it. Halcyon. Oh, some style points there. Using that block to clip through, but it does them no good. Uh, because they need the bomb. But look at the value, right? Not, not to, like, compare, right? Halcyon and Louie are both very good. But... Look at the value. That could have happened to anybody, right? Halcyon could have got it. Louis could have got it. Look at the value of the read. Everything Louis did after getting to the bomb was a sight read. And see how much that helped out, right? Louis could have easily died, and they'd still be kind of tied neck and neck right now. And, uh, you know, Halcyon could have got the read before. And I think that's something that just makes these races very cool and dynamic. Is that it, it, it's anybody's game, right? Like, we're, you know, we're looking for... Halcyon for second place right now, an, an obvious contender for second place. But you fail me, could read some of these obstacles super fast and switch it all around like that. So it, you never know. You never, ever know. Halcyon, though, looking pretty good. Nope, sorry I said anything. Boy, this is making me really want to get a pretzel, man. I love pretzels. Pretzels are awesome. Aunt Annie's pretzels, as are commonly found in airport terminals and uh, malls. Oh, man. Best ever. These pretzels are making me thirsty. Who's in Team Pretzel? I'll read the list off again. Um, Haraga, Ampersam, E-Man, Yope, Elus, the Java Brew, Biben Leg, and Led Luigi. Really appreciate the efforts of all these fine makers tonight to bring us a super fun ROM hack race level. I think this is great. I did really like this level. I'm glad that the standard renaissance is alive and well. What mustard would go good on a pretzel? Well, you see, friends, you'll often be told that, uh... Gordon's Average Yellow Mustard is the superior mustard brand for pretzels, but discerning Kaizo Romhack race fans know that Da Vinci's Fancy Yellow Mustard is the only choice. 
since 1874. Da Vinci's Fancy Yellow Mustard has had more fancy and more yellow in the bottle than any old bottle of Gordon's Average Yellow Mustard. So next time you're enjoying a delicious pretzel, reach for a jar of Da Vinci's Fancy Yellow Mustard, the only mustard certified by the Pretzel Commission to go on all pretzels across the world. In case you were curious, here goes RB Pimlico with a freaking sick strat for this P-Switch. Can they pull this off? RB Pimlico. Lower left hand corner contemplating life. Yo, here's another feature of standard hacks that RB Pimlico makes full advantage, full use of uh, having a damage boost, right? Standard hacks will often give the player a power up that they don't need. Kaizo doesn't tend to do that, right? Kaizo, like one of the things of Kaizo is that it specifically won't do that. It won't, if, you're, if you are given a mushroom, you are intended to lose the mushroom at a very specific moment uh, or a fire flower or whatever you know you don't just get free power-ups man what do you think this is some kind of magic power-up zone man um, but standard hacks do that quite a bit and the thing about that is it doesn't really make it any easier it sometimes changes the circumstances like for example um, like depraved stronghold if you have the mushroom some of the jumps are just more difficult because you're bigger and you still have to improvise and uh, you know use your damage boost or duck and dodge or something so don't necessarily think of standard hacks giving the player power-ups as automatic easy mode but think of it as a way to change what the challenge is and where where it's all situated Halcyon, whoa, recycling that bomb like a champ right now. Up throw. Oh. Oh, but they could do it. Wait, Halcyon might be thinking about some cheese. Are you thinking about the same cheese that I'm thinking about? Halcyon is thinking about the cheese. You could use a Goomba. Yo. Yo. Presence of mind from Halcyon now. What you gonna do? Up. Oh. Uh. The invisible floor. Hey, that was some great cheese and some great presence of mind. Halcyon, not just dropping in the pit, but using the Goomba to open the gate. They could have brought the, the bomb. That's how Louie did it. And again, another fine and cool thing about Standard is that it gives you the option to use your environment in creative ways. And that's something that you don't get in Kaizo. I hope that, if anything tonight... You will see the value of standard. Go and try some standard stuff. It is really fun, and it will make you a better Kaizo player. If 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 that's what you want, right? You want to play Kaizo, man. You wanna you wanna be the best Kaizo player, man. You wanna play you wanna play uh, Depraved Stronghold. You wanna play Dram's Butthole, man. You wanna play uh, 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 Anonymous Bloodlust Hacks, man. You know you're never gonna be Glitchcade, man. Like if you want to be a better Kaizo player. Standard is part of the deal. You got to you got to know the improvisation. You have to be able to control the character in the abstract in the, in the absence of Kaizo things telling you what to do all the time. You know, Kaizo says, "Do a shell jump," and that's what you do. And you don't have to interpret that in any way. You just have to learn the trick. There's skill involved, but you know, take a look at the variety of different approaches that players have had to this level and uh that comes from standard you get that more in standard it allows you to play expressively and it allows you to develop elements of your technique that you just don't get the opportunity to do with kaizo also you fail me with that really cool strat to cheese the uh turnaround part although you know i can't say like is this all cheese or is it just a different way to do it still haven't beaten glitchcade i think like two people 
Like, myself and, like, one other person have beaten Glitchcade. Someone came to my chat the other day. I'm sorry I forget the name. Someone came into my chat the other day, and they're like, I finally beat Glitchcade. I used your videos. I'm like, wow, you're, like, the other person that did that. Glitchcade, for those that don't know, is a four-minute... MF Flash, thank you. Uh, Glitchcade, for those that don't know, is, like, a real-time... Like, a four-minute real-time disco survival section where you're, like constantly bouncing on a disco shell while the room moves and evolves around you and you have to survive for like four IRL minutes it's pretty intense uh, West Slasher made it for me to bust my chops years ago yeah no I beat the long one I beat I beat the, the, the big one yeah I think I, I think so I might be wrong but I think I, I I think that's the version. My clear is on YouTube for those who want to see it. I have the big one. I have a lot of old versions of that. But yeah, West Slasher made that to bust my chops back in the day. And so I, uh, I beat it. It's really, honestly, I think Glitchcade is really fun, but disco surfing is inherently tough on the hands. At a, at a certain point, it's hard to play that level for a long period of time, because at a certain point, you your muscles just start to not want to do that anymore, and then it can get kind of frustrating where you're just like, why, why, I'm dying, I know how to do this, why am I dying? Like It's because your muscles are wearing out. RB Pimlico, what are you thinking in the lower left here? RB Pim, oh my gosh, I know what they're thinking. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, wait, no way, no way, wait, no way. RB, all eyes on RB Pimlico in the lower left. They have a thought. They have a thought here. What? What are you doing? What are you doing, RB Pimlico? What are you doing? Oh, they skipped it. Oh, I see. Wait. B2 trying for the checkpoint. Oh, oh, I see. They skipped it. Oh, that's smart. I don't know if they realized what they did, though. I'm not I'm not sure they realized what they did. Yeah, they skipped it. By, by flipping that switch back, they skipped the whole turnaround part. That's pretty clever. I love these standard races, man. You get to see different approaches. You get to you get to see different gamers playing the same level in different ways. And when you got different gamers playing a different game, then well you got a diverse game community. And before one of the pipes actually takes you to, like, a secret warp that, like, skips half the level. And all the racers didn't try any of the pipes. That'd be kind of funny if there was a, uh, a level that, like, was kind of like a standard race level where you did you had to like find the path like all like pipes would take you around to different rooms and you had to kind of like there were like multiple ways you could go through depending on like what you did or where you went or something we've had like random room type level races before so i guess that's like kind of the same thing but yeah pick a pick a pipe race <laughs> Uh, everyone, I would like to give you an update that my cat Mallow is here and wants my attention because he is a good cat and also is adorable. I'm sorry, I can no longer look at the race. I now must give him a scritch because he's a good guy and that's what he wants. I'm sorry, everyone, but I am a professional cat petting enthusiast now. My ROM hacking days are over. I must now pet the cat.
yeah, being able to get a mushroom is, uh, like I said, like a standard kind of thing. Yeah, I f yeah, I do. I feel like RB, RB definitely understands what they're doing in skipping that. It's clever. It's it's a it's a clever play. You really you really do. You get to see the the brain power on display from some racers as they just like don't do what you expect in the level, but they succeed nonetheless. Oh, tough jump for RB. We are looking for a third place right now. We're here to cheer everybody on, though. Uh, watch out for you fail me in the upper right. They are, Ampersam. And, you know, the only thing that really prevents us from doing more of that is, like, lack of levels. Y you know what I mean? Like, I, I would love to see more interest in this kind of SMW hack because, I because it has a lot to offer that I don't think we're taking full advantage of as a community. Eight more still racing tonight. We got B2DE. We got you, fail me, RB Pimlico, and uh, Ender of Games right now. If y'all want to learn a little bit more, if you're just joining us and you think this is cool, or you think that these racers look like scrubs and you could do it better, head on over to romhackraces.com, our official website, and uh, we got all the race levels. You can download the patches and try them out. Uh, you can sign up for races if you want to volunteer and help us out behind the scenes. That would also be great. And uh, you can find all this and more on romhackraces.com. Home of romhackraces.com. It's romhackraces.com. Catchy song. I made it up myself. You fail me with some tough decisions to make here. Oh, clever. Unspawning the small fires. Pretty clever. You fail me on a read right now. If you're on the web and want to go to the site that's related to the show, you can go to romhackraces.com. Oh. You fail me. Oh, jeez, man. Moving right along. You fail me now. We're waiting for bomb recycles. Yep, there it is. You fail me with the presence of mind. They know that that bomb is going to blow up unless you set it down and you nudge it like that. Every time you do that, for whatever reason in the code, the bomb timer resets. You fail me. This could be it. <gasps> oh, no. Can, you, can they get it? You fail me. Oh, no. What's going to happen? I don't know if they can make it. Ah, oh, GG. GG, that was good. Good reads. See that? The value. The read. The big value. Big savings. Reads at the end. Getting the win. Good job. You fail me. A solid third place. Fun level. I want to play this one myself. Once I'm done with Ra Raku Goku Mario World or whatever, then, then I'm going to play this one. Ra Raccoon Goku Mario World. I gotta say, I've been enjoying it. I even picked it up for moderation. That's right, so y'all better be on your best behavior. Yeah, Ra Raccoon Goku Mario World. What it, what, what was it supposed to be called? RB Pimlico, hanging out for some cheese at the checkpoint. Ender of Games in the lower right, working on the first section. B2, also first section. Super Mario Pants World. We got Germ Dove in the upper right. We got B2, RB, Ender of Games.
<laughs> what about Newman's own Mario World? If if dog had powers, or if my cat had powers, I would just hope that they would remember all the times that I that I fed them and took care of them. If my cat develops laser vision, I'm I just I hope he likes me. R B Pimlico Lower left. Yo, nice avoidance. Now they need that piranha back. This merging of timings is cool. Gotta bounce on the piranha, but the piranha's going up and down. And have to watch out for the, uh, for the spiny. Laser vision, if you've ever seen, like, a laser pointer, or, uh, or, or like, uh, like one of those green laser pointers, it just means that you can shoot them out of your eyes. By, like, blinking to turn it on. It's actually not as cool. Apparently, back in the uh, in the old days, like the comic book Superman days, apparently the lasers were stronger, and you could like melt steel beams with them or whatever. But I think nowadays they just have the cheap ones that just kind of look cool, you know. Uh, I had a buddy that got bit by a, a radioactive mosquito and developed laser vision, and um, actually made pretty decent money just showing up at like raves and parties and things. Like he would he would like hire by the hour. And they would show up at the rave and kind of stand there and the lights would flash out of his eyes. He said it was pretty good money, but at the same time, he, like, got really sick of it all. Like, the, the you know, just the endless partying kind of wore him down. But that's that's about all I've heard people have been able to do with it. Apparently, some you could get, like, a contracting job. Uh, you could maybe work for, like, a laser etching company or something. But you really have to practice for that. And if you don't have, like, drawing skills, like, if you can't, like, draw with your face, then... You know, you're not going to be able to do much with it. B2 with the checkpoint, though. Laser beam. Laser beam and right on to the next section. It's B2 on the second section. Also, uh, RB Pimlico in the lower left corner. <laughs> a superpower that allowed you to transmute cheese into a different kind of cheese. That's like both useless and kind of helpful at the same time. It's certainly not a power that would backfire on you. GG, you fail me. Well played. Good job for the third tonight. Great ending. I do remember the chocolate touch. It was that kid that turned everything touched into chocolate. It was like King Midas, but he was chocolate. Chocolate Midas. Choco Lightus, they called him. RB Pimlico looking to touch some chocolate. Well, if it turned into Limburger cheese, you could just touch it again and turn it into something else. You know, you know what I mean? Like, in, in a world where you generate all random possibilities, there's, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. I, there were some other folks that tried that clip as well. Looks like RB Pimlico is going to try for it. Oh! Whoa! Man, we have seen some swag from players tonight. RB Pimlico with that nice... Uh, clip jump through the slope you can do that if you jump at the right angle but now learning learning how to use the uh the bomb was your shell strat after the midway cheese yes it was in a in a manner of speaking as much as you can cheese a standard level
Yo, that's how you. That's it, Om Nom Nom. That's it. That's how you make the money on it. That's how you make the money on it. I was wondering how you would do that, but yeah, you're right. You buy a bunch of cheap spray cheese and then turn it into fancy, fancy, really good cheese and then sell the profits and then eat the profits. Delightful. Yeah, if you jump at the right angle at a slope, kind of like following the angle of it, you uh, might clip through. RB Pimlico's got some really cool cheese for this part, but I'm starting to wonder if it's more trouble than it's worth. Right? The, the, the part that RB... I mean, they can play however they want. If that's what you want to do, you do it. But economically speaking... They're now, like, dying to make some attempts at that. And I wonder if it probably wouldn't be faster just to actually do the strat as intended. But it's working out. Yeah, it's a slow strat, which is the kind of thing you have to balance in a race sometimes. If, you know, if you're racing. Some people just race for fun, just, you know, for themselves. Like, that's also valid. But if you're racing to race, like, at a certain point you have to ask yourself, am I just wasting time doing this? Yeah, it's working, but... At what cost? But who knows? I mean, it, they're getting through. All it takes is one good run. That's true, Doc. Standard races definitely have a strategy element that Kaizo doesn't. That's why I would really like to see more very hard standard level type stuff. Because you, you get to see the different strats and different approaches. If anything, I'd like to see a level that leaned into that even more. RB Pimlico, though. Keep your eyes on the lower left. They uh, They know what they're doing here. Their cheese strat is slow, but it could definitely earn them a really good rank on the uh, leaderboard tonight. If they could just follow through with it. Yeah, I was going to mention that, uh, Dark and I. Uh, I haven't seen anybody try it, but that is another thing that's common in standard hacks is screen scrolling. In the vanilla game, you can press L and R to scroll the screen in that direction and see ahead a little bit. And that can be really helpful for all kinds of things. It's a, it's an underutilized mechanic. Often Kaizo hacks will just disable it in the first place because you can create a lot of cheese with it that um, you could spawn something early, you could spawn something late. Uh, primarily, aside from looking ahead, Screen scrolling is used for spawn manipulation. Yes, absolutely. Um, you can, you know, just manipulate cycles, cause something to spawn earlier, later. Uh, you have a, you have a, a interesting degree of control uh, over the spawn using that kind of scrolling. Standard hacks often don't get rid of it. This level did disable it, apparently. Um, but in very often, standard hacks won't get rid of it, and. You need to use that as a tool in the toolbox. Uh, be aware of that. And, you know, spawn manipulation isn't just a property for LR scrolling. Spawn manipulation can be done just by moving the camera. So the, the more focus you can have on the way that your movements affect the camera, and then the way the camera in turn affects the spawn of sprites or cycles, maybe you want something at a different cycle so you want to spawn it earlier or later because if you do that the cycle will be more favorable to you um that's just camera and movement manipulation so being aware of that is i think more of a standard thing and it's no offense kaizo players but it's an area of i think deficiency in some cases in in kaizo hacks and in kaizo play styles that spawn manipulation is not properly used or considered when it really ought to be.
Yo, yeah, big shout out to the creators tonight. Thank you all so much for helping us with this. This is a very entertaining race. And I hope you're all having a comfy night. Having a, you know, a relaxing Saturday. A day, a day to not work and hang out. Have a snack or something. Y'all are kind of cool people. And I think I can speak for the entire Rom Hack Race staff. It is an honor to do these for you. We all have a lot of fun with this. Big shout outs as usual to Dr. No running the restream, lighting, lighting, lighting the restream jackpot, running that for us, and D to the fourth helping us out with the website and the leaderboard. She is an amazing human being. Man, RB Pimlico did everything right, except they didn't reset the bomb timer. That's an advanced technique that is referenced by the E rating for the level. You'll need to know that setting a bomb down and nudging it, or I think throwing a bomb forward, will reset the detonation timer. When you stomp on a bomb, it starts a countdown. It's an invisible countdown, but it's a countdown nonetheless that will detonate at a certain point. But you have to reset it in order to carry the bomb great distances. It's a hot potato sort of mechanic. And that's uh, something that's used in standard as well as Kaizo hacks. It used to be used more in Kaizo, but I feel like it's kind of fallen out of favor now. Or uh, makers don't really have anything to do with it other than just carry the bomb, reset the bomb, and then use it to open targets. Do we have a bomb sprite that indicates its time left? Not to my knowledge, Dark and I. Which is odd, but yeah, I don't think anyone's ever made it. I um I again I think bomb bomb timer run levels have kind of fallen out of favor. Um I, I honestly I really do think, like I said, I think that's because there's not much to do with it. I mean, you're you're holding an object, you're resetting the time, resetting the timer, right? That's like the difference between bombs and shells, right? You carry it, you hit you hit an on-off switch with it, you kill an enemy with it, you open a turn block, and you keep going. So it really is just like throw the or maybe maybe if you fix the hitbox collision on the explosion, maybe you spin jump off the bomb explosion at some point. But that's kind of it, right? We need the Mario Maker bombs that scoot. I think West Slasher made them. The the Mario Maker bombs that scoot along the ground, because now you can spin on them and uh, maybe even do like a spin drop. Maybe uh, if the time is too short for the bombs, make it longer. You know, make, make, a, make a bomb that counts down for several seconds or whatever. Or several more seconds. RB, watch the lower left. This could be it. Yo, nice timing. RB Pimlico playing it safe. You'd love to see it. Playing it safe. Oh, the skepticism. Look at this. Oh, you love it. You love it. I love the skepticism. Nice job, RB Pimlico. Getting faked out by the invisible floor. That's a good ending. I like I like that ending. I like that ending a lot. It leaves you no choice other than to just go for it, and then you say, Ah, oh, invisible floor. I like that. GG, that was well earned. Man, splendid level tonight. Splendid. Nathan MG joins us in the lower left. How you doing?
Thanks all once again for making Rom Hack Races a part of your Saturday night. We do these every week, and we would love to have you if you want to come and hang out for more. Yo, GG, RB. Well played. I like how uh, Germ Dove, the section Germ Dove is on here. There is a mushroom in that, I think. And so by choosing the harder the harder play there and taking the Disco Shell, uh, you could be rewarded with the damage boost for this next section, which would really help out. And it's, it's strategic decisions like that that I think really set standard hacks apart and make them interesting. I like the uh, the long run for the Chuck 8 that Germ Dove is doing. You have to get the Chuck to jump from far away and then run up to it. It forces a different kind of timing as opposed to your standard Kaizo Chuck 8. B2, trying for a read here. B2, could get it. Oh no, watch out. Ah, buddy. Don't despawn the shell. I like that about races too, Amper. Yeah, you really you get to see you get to see different you know different captures. It's fun. Yeah, but with the shell respawned like that, the Koopa is never actually going to uh, kick the shell where you want to be. Ah, uh, that's unfortunate. But now you know. B two trying to make this work, but yeah, I think they're I think they're toast. Nathan MG with the incredibly purple layout. I like it. I it's nice. Eye catching. One thing that I'm not seeing people do, which I th I think you can. I'm right. You can spin jump off green beans, and that would make that green bean section a little bit easier, uh, because you could aim for the spiny instead of trying to avoid it. That can be a strat, really, like, lean into the danger. If, if, if the spiny is blocking your path, don't try to avoid it. Try to land right on it, you know? It's, it's, it's an offensive MO for dealing with some obstacles. You can spin jump off green beans, right? Germ Dove, though, doesn't need it with that nice little edge landing.
That's a very classic Mario thing. I've been talking about that play in Raccoon Goku World. Uh, jumping and landing. There's a piranha plant sticking up out of a pipe. Jumping and landing on the edge of the pipe in such a way that you don't actually die. Can you not? I'm I'm I forget now. I actually forget. Can you can you spin jump off green beans or not? I know blocks is the frame perfect thing, but I thought green beans you could just do it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I maybe I'm thinking of springs. You can for sure spin jump off springs. Yeah, I think I yeah, I think I'm thinking of springboards and not green beans. But yeah, that the 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 pipe the pipe edge landing is classic Mario. I mean, you know, we, we were doing that back in the day, before there was any Kaizo. It was a cool skill trick to be able to do that. That's a that's a very uh, classic and, and helpful tool to have in the toolbox for playing standard hacks, is getting a good feel for how to do those edge landings. Same thing with uh, thwomps. You could also land on a... You could, like, stand on the edge and not get killed by the thwomp that's, like, landing in the same spot. Nathan, MG, lower left on a try. What are we going to get here? Oh my, Nathan. Yikes. Yeah, ignoring several boxes and a switch. Huh. Oh, well, you know, I hope everybody's feeling comfy. I don't know. There's, there's only so much play-by-play -play I can give on exactly the same obstacles. But if you have any questions or want to learn a little bit more, please feel free to ask. That's completely cool. It's not a bother. I hope you're all having a great night. Thanks for being a part of the race. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. <clears throat> Thanks. I think B2 has finally gone back to, yeah, doing the actual strat. I think they finally made the call that that was costing them a little bit too much time. Yo, thank you. Thanks for lurking. We really appreciate that. This is uh, super fun to do every week. I very much look forward to it. Sorry, I'm kind of running out of stuff to say uh, about the level, kind of hanging out, just getting everybody's clears in, having some fun. So you feel, feel free to ask questions, I guess. That's all.
Oh, how are you spending your Saturday night there, friends? Besides watching ROM hack races, of course. What is a regrab? Ah, good question. Um, so a regrab is a weird term that we basically use to mean a jump where you press the button twice. You're re-grabbing the button. What this does is it exploits a property in Super Mario World that was really just there to help people out and make the game easier, but it sort of accidentally creates really nuanced physics. Um, a re-grab exploits the property that Mario falls more slowly, will descend more slowly, when you're holding the jump button in the air. And if you're not holding the jump button in the air, you will fall more rapidly. And so using trickery, you can exploit this property to give yourself a jump that has a wide horizontal distance, but a low vertical. And you can design situations that only work if you do a jump like that. So you jump up into the air, and then you let go of the button in order to get a lower jump, a lower vertical, and then you re-grab the button or re-press it, and that causes you to fall more slowly, causing the descending arc of your jump to be wider, and it helps you clear wider distances and have more control over your motions in the air. And that's a re-grab. If you want, I have a tutorial video on my YouTube that explains a little bit better in more detail. We got Schema Tuna coming in here in the lower lower right. First time racer with a freaking H to their name. I like to see it. And, uh, oof. oh, no, sorry. They are working. Yeah, Schema Tuna lower right with the H. Uh, Germ Dove trying to get the H. So close. B2, almost there. And Nathan, overdue, I feel. B2, trying to guide that fire around a little bit. Yeah, thank you. A, a, a re-grab is... Yeah, essentially it's just a, uh, a double, double press jump, but there's a lot of articulation involved you know you could think of regrabs honestly um and maybe this is a bad analogy but regrabs are kind of like vibrato if you play uh play guitar you press down the string and you wiggle your finger a little bit to make it go and kind of get a little vibrate on the sound it's vibrato regrabs are like vibrato it's easy to do but you can have an endless amount of nuance. You get a little more, a little less, depending, and you can really dial in like exactly where you want to be. A really, a really talented Super Mario player can jump onto any pixel, onto any block. I mean, pixel, you know, pixel perfect is rough, but uh, think of every question block as being divided into quarters, right? The extreme left, the center left, the middle, you know, the extreme right, the center right, there's four halves of a block. A good Kaizo player, a good SMW player in general, will be able to land a jump on any position. You name it, left side of the block, they can hit it. Right side, they can hit it. Any, anywhere, any position, you can just hit that jump. Um, and that is what regrabs help out with, being able to have way more control. Instead of, like, uh, think of a game like Donkey Kong. We've all played Donkey Kong before, right? In Donkey Kong, you have one jump. You press the button, and you go up in the air, and then you come back down. And that takes the same amount of time. It has the same arc. It has the same trajectory and everything. Um, you just get that one jump. The more control you have over the height, the trajectory, uh, the momentum that you're building up, the more articulate and nuanced you can be. And Mario World has a surprising amount of that. More than you'd think. Or maybe not. I don't know. I'm not you. B2 on the slopes. Uh, Schema Tuna. I'm not sure. What are they going for here? Oh, tricky. That is a cheese. Oh, that's a tricky cheese. Yeah, they run through 
They get P-Speed and they bop the block on their way. And uh, that also lets them skip the roundabout section in a faster way than B2 was doing. Pretty cool. Nice job. Schema Tuna. First race, but really making a great show for it. <gasps> that reminds me, yo. Go and... F Excuse me. Go and follow the racers. There are fantastic people playing fantastic Kaizo games in our community. And uh, they would love to see some friends in chat. They're getting their names out there. Showing off their skills, and I think that should be rewarded. Ah, uh, B2. B2, trying for that same cheese? Trying for that same cheese. All right, well, good luck. They are they are committed to skipping that roundabout part. I got to respect that. Yeah, that's true, Mr. X. Holding the holding the jump button weakens gravity. Yeah. You can I, I like to think of it like a parachute. Think of regrabs like a really crappy parachute that Mario has. Like basically just an umbrella. Not a real it's not really gonna stop your fall. It's like a parachute with holes in it. But it will help you slow down a little bit. So think of it think of like press regrabs like deploying a crappy parachute. Germ Dove with a P switch in hand. What in the heck? Oh, I see what they're trying for. This is going to be rough. They want to respawn the spiny that they killed. I don't know if they can in this spot or not. They're going to have to go up and over. Oh my gosh, they're really they might pull this off. They're yeah, watch Germdove in the upper right. They're trying to respawn the spiny. Oh, they pulled it off. They freaking pulled it off. Nicely done. That was a very difficult maneuver. Nicely done. Yeah, by by going to the left there, they pull the camera off screen and they respawn the spiny that they need to cross that. That was a really good save. Good job, Germdove. That was tight. Oh, wow. The presence of mind. Look at this, dude. Hold up. Wait, that's really clever. They have the switch, and letting it expire is going to drop some of those enemies out of the way, making that a little bit easier. Dang. Yo. The, and they got the damage boost. If they can pull this off, this is it, Germdove. This is all yours. All yours. Germdove. That was splendid. They deserved that. They absolutely deserved that. Well earned. Yeah, that was some great plays where it counted. Good job, Germdove. That was tight. Big style multiplier combo points for that. So that's the H. Germdove moving on. Fighting it out with B2 and Schema Tuna. That P-Speed cheese for the Switch is classy. That's a, that's a classy... This is classy. I like it. That is the cheese. So B2's strat ended up being a little time-consuming. But Schema Tuna's strat is time-saving. Which is pretty cool. So Schema Tuna is actually saving time per attempt, right? That if, if Unless you're doing that strat... Schema Tuna will always be able to cycle attempts faster than you, which is great for a race. A strong player, welcome. Welcome to ROM Hack Races. Glad to see. A standard level really lets you kind of get into the weeds with players and see the individual moment-to-moment -moment kind of clutch things that they do. You see less of that in a Kaizo race. B2 
two. Getting consistent, man. Nice toss. B2 trying to stay alive. Uh, dead on the bomb. And they can't respawn it because they can't go too far. I like the very tall checkpoint in this level. Another classic Mario type thing. Yeah, Germdove has definitely played some shell stuff. I think I think that's termed of Nice strat for B2 really despawning all the small fires that are left by the hopping flame in order to make that green shell grab easier. That's a good play. Interesting choice of spin jump to stay alive on the uh on the slopes. I'd have gone for regulars because you get more hang time and you do fewer jumps, but that's just me. Works out either way. B2 with that consistency, though. Losing the bomb, but they're right back here. I think they're trying to cheese it because there's no way that they would know that they need the bomb. They might guess, but now they get to learn. Yeah, you do you do your headbanging right now, B2. You'll see. This is valuable knowledge though. Schema Tuna, lower right hand corner, back again at the key. Whoa, man! Dang, Schema Tuna. Fast. Fast motion, man. That's the talented, talented players we got here. Okay, how do you pronounce this name? B E B N Leg. B Ben Leg? Is that how you say that name? I've never been clear on that. Shout out to them for the port. B Bin. B Bin Leg. Okay, okay. My bad. I want to make sure I get that right. Oh, Beb Bin. Beb, Beb Bin. Excuse me. Germed of looking for the win here.
I appreciate the patience. Oh. Oh, they got it. Germ Dove got the gate open. I appreciate the patience from the racers. That's something that Standard will teach you. Yeah, Germ Dove just trying to work with that hopping flame. It does try to hop toward Mario, um, but it can be kind of weird. B2, same try. They've got the strats, though. Yeah, check that out. B2 got the strats to get those fire little teeny fires out of the way. Germ Dove looking at the up toss. All right, Germ Dove with a chance for... Ooh, never mind. B2 in the upper left. Yeah, being careful, watching that bomb. Good. I, lo I like that presence of mind. Oh, watch. Keep your eyes on the upper left. This could be it. B2, DE81. Across the invisible bridge of destiny to the H of glory. GG. Yo, with that, these are our final four razors for tonight. Ender of Games, Germ Dove in the upper right, Nathan MG, and Schema Tuna in the lower right. Thanks, everybody, for coming out and racing with us. We schedule about two hours for these broadcasts. We're an hour and a half in, so feel free to just kick back, relax with us for a little bit. How do bob -omb timers work? Well, allow me to explain. When you stomp on a bob -omb, you make it go inert. And you can carry it, move it around, throw it like an object. Um, when you stomp on a bomb, a timer starts counting down inside the code. When that timer hits zero, the bomb blows up. However, uh, it's not really an intended mechanic of the vanilla game. It's just kind of a weird thing you can do. You can reset that detonation timer if you throw the bomb forward or you drop it on the ground and nudge it without picking it up. For whatever reason, that uh, resets the timer. So that's what, if you see the racers like drop the bomb on the ground and touch it a little bit and make it bounce around, that's what they're doing. They're being careful to keep that timer reset so that it won't blow up when they don't want it to. That is true. And that's important to keep in mind. Up tosses and drops do not reset the bomb timer. Only nudges and forward throws. Which is very important to keep in mind for the hot potato bomb levels. Yo, B2, thank you so much for the raid, and thanks for racing with us tonight. You did great. Well played. Had some cool cheese strats, and uh, really clutched it out. Oh, um, excuse me, friends, one second. Uh, I'm getting a gnarly storm coming through my area, and I gotta get up and close the window. If I just randomly disappear, that's what happened. Storm knocked out our power. Thank you so much for the sub, too, B2. Appreciate that so much. That's B2DE81. Go follow the racers. Go follow them on Twitch. They're the ones doing the hard work for you here tonight. Thank you for 21 months. Enjoy your very cool special ROM Hack Race custom emotes. Yep, that's why. That's why, it would, that's why the bomb will blow up sometimes and not other times.
Hey everybody, this is Dr. No coming in. Uh, Glitch's power just had a little bit of a thing happen to it. So, while Glitch is getting set up, I do want to take a moment to say thank you again to the creators who uh, all stepped up and helped us with this week's level. Uh, as you may have noticed from last week, the originally a different creator was uh, set up for tonight. They had to back out. Yeah, Glitches, okay, we're just having some power issues related to the storm he just mentioned. So uh, as soon as Glitch is back and ready to roll, uh, we'll get him back in here. But uh, I do want to thank these uh, these awesome people for stepping up and helping uh, put this together. Uh, Team Pretzel is a very big and very sneaky, illustrious team. <laughs> Uh, so, again, I want to say thanks to everyone that pitched in to help make this level happen. Haraga, Ampersam, Eman, Yolpen Gombler, Elus, the Java Brew, Bevan Leg, and Led Luigi. Um, that's a lot of firepower on one team, let alone one team that came together on a very brief moment's notice to help make this level happen. Uh, just so you know, in case it was curious... This week was always going to be a standard level, so don't think we just threw this off. But I think Glitch is, well, Glitch is not quite back yet, but it's, uh, I'm hearing ghosts or phantom Glitch Cats. Maybe Glitch Cat 3 or 4 coming through, but uh, no. Glitch is coming back, and as soon as he is, he's going to uh, hop back in here and help take us to the rest of the race. Uh, in the meantime, I want to take this brief moment of microphone time to say that... Uh, we are fast approaching, and I mean fast approaching, Romhack Race 200. Uh, this is Romhack Race number 191 as... Oh, hold up, Nathan's close. Come on. Oh. Ooh, I shouldn't have said it. I'm out of, I'm out of practice, but I'm, I'm glad to see that I can at least still curse with the commentators of the best of them. But this is Romhack race number 191, and we are getting dangerously, dangerously close to Romhack race 200. Uh, which, for one, is a long time. But wait, I didn't say. Oh, S Tuna. Oh, Tuna figured it out, but wasn't able to quite get the bomb where they needed it to go. We're nine weeks away from Romhack race 200. And interestingly, the very first Romhack race ever held, wasn't even held on this channel, was held on the Super Mario World channel, run by some dear friends in the vanilla speedrunning community, uh, was July 21st, 2018. We are four years removed from that. And in the four years, we have held over... It'll over 190 races with over 140 different creators and over 600 racers. No, I'm not making that up. That's a lot of racers. And pulled up. I'm waiting to see what this schema tuna out here has been putting on a show. I would like to say that. Just from my seat in the director's chair, if you will, Schema has been putting on an absolute show, and it is a treat to see them. And I'm really happy that they decided to make this their first race, because they are showing out. Not to mention that Ender, Nathan, and Germdove have been doing really, really good things of their own. But, you know, it's always nice to see first-time racers here. It's always nice to see first-time racers step up on weeks where you wouldn't necessarily assume a first-time racer would would want to be a part of it. Uh, this is the first E-rated level we've ever had. It's only the third standard level we've ever had. So to see new racers at all is always a treat, but to see a new racer this week come out and put on a show for everyone is really, really cool. So big, big props to Schema Tuna. Make sure you give them a follow at twitch.tv slash schema underscore tuna. And they're over here with this clock room, grabbing shells, getting through. 
we've got Germ Dove, we've got Endure of Games, and we've got Nathan MG. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm nowhere near as smart about this whole thing as Glitch is. I said this in chat earlier. I'll say it out loud. I'm not afraid to admit that I'm being honest. It Well, before I say this, it uh, looks like... Hello? Yes. Hello. My... Hello, my friend. Hey, what's up, Doc? Hey, hi. I'm back. Hi. Sorry, I uh, our, our power flipped off. You know, you said it might, and then it did. <laughs> so... Yep. As, uh, it's good to have you back, Glitch. Glad everything's okay. Yeah, hang out. If you want to uh, hang out and yeah. chat, that's, well, I don't, don't want to kick you out of the space here. No, I was just wanted to say real quick, two things. One, uh, Rom Hack Race 200 is mm -hmm. going to be July 23rd. And no, we're not going to tell you who's making the level. That is nope. going to be a surprise. Nope. I, gonna... Actually, this one I actually know. I'm not saying either. <laughs> we are going to hold this one very close to the chest until... Because we want this to be a special... Because 200 is a very round number. Uh, and we like round numbers around here. We tend to, to do big things for round numbers. Uh, but this is also our four-year anniversary level. Which, holy crap, four years is a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's been a minute. And we got a SGDQ race to celebrate with yes. this year, too. Yes. That is going to be July 1st. Uh, it's currently scheduled for 11.06 p.m. Eastern, but I think we all know those are always kind of in, up in the air until it actually happens in terms of time. We will see. We will see. Friday night is the is the ROM hack is the uh, ROM hack races. I'm not going to say it's our it's our relay, but there's quite a few of us that are helping put that one on so you'll see and hear a lot more about that relay as we get closer to it uh, we're also keeping the creator list for that relay pretty close to the vest as well at least until we are ready to say more but i will promise you this and glitch can speak to this too a little bit because he's seen the list this very well be the most stacked collaboration we have ever put together it's a good list it is it's a, a very good list, good list. Do I do I do I get to reveal my role since it's not much? Absolutely. Well, the, your role is well, very I'm, I'm important. Well, I'm testing. Yeah. <laughs> Glitch well, I'm just, I'm just saying it, 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 it's a background part. I'm that's yeah. fine. That's fine. Uh, H for Nathan MG over there. Well earned. It, he has been working on that P switch section for quite some time, so I'm really happy to see him pull that off. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, and this is just a moment of pure honesty on my part. Uh, I did not know you could upthrow from a net until I watched a whole bunch of people do it for this level. I think oh. that's pretty neat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yep. You can't advanced techniques rated E. Mm -hmm. So there's my moment of honesty for the night. This level, you can, um, this level rocks. I'm just gonna say you that. can also <laughs> upthrow from uh, vines. Same thing. Yo, Germ Dove in the upper right making a play for it. Yo, Germ Dove! Heck yeah, Germ Wow! Dove. Get Yo, there. notice that the bomb turned a different color because it started to flash like it was going to blow up and then Germ Dove reset the timer. It's a tight move to do that, but it's uh, but it's cool. Nice. Nice. Fun and fact, you can do that. Well, I'm, I'm kind of revealing my hand a little bit, but you can do that in Mario Brothers 2 also. If you throw a bomb into quicksand, it resets the bomb timer, and if it flashes, it like holds the color of the bomb, um, which is kind of cool. That Schema Tuna, cool. yo, lower right hand. Nice. Oh, Schema Tuna, though. That's what happens when you don't reset the bomb. Mm. How are you doing, Doc? You like doing all right? I'm doing uh, we, good. We got a chance to chat. I've been keeping busy. <laughs> I got, I got, I got a lot. We all got a lot going on around these parts, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. I'll put it that way. But yeah, I'm keeping busy. We are. We do this because we want to celebrate racers, and we want to celebrate the people that make these levels. 
And if we can put on things that inspire more people to play and make things, then we've done our job right. And I take that to heart. And I, I like putting in the work to make these things big. So. Well, it goes a long way. <laughs> really, really, really appreciate mm -hmm. that. I also want to give a shout out to Hiraga for A, helping put this whole thing together. Uh, along with Ampersam, who really stepped up to help make something really cool happen on a relatively short notice. Uh, but also Haraga, one of the main leaders behind, uh, I believe we're calling it Raccoon Goku Mario. <laughs> uh, also, if you if you didn't get a chance to see Haraga's uh, level from a couple weeks back, uh, you should, because it's it's also it's not a standard level. It is a Kaiser level, but it is a very old school level in every way. I yeah, also, Ra it, Raccoon Goku Mario World is built as an homage to ha hacks like Hyper Six, Luigi's Adventure, old school stuff like that. I I've seen it really melt some faces, and I get it. I I've enjoyed it. I I, I will say that. It's a it's one of those things where if you were around when but like pre this is gonna sound weird. Pre Invictus. <laughs> um when there wasn't that much opportunity to play. Like oh there were literally a third of as many hacks as there are now. Um these kinds of ha these kinds of levels and these kinds of hacks are what got people into Kaizo. Uh, the VIP hacks, jump, uh, levels like this are what inspired a whole bunch of people to take up uh, this whole mantle of Kaizo, both making levels and playing them. So, seeing them come back has been a real, real, real cool treat and. Uh, seeing people's reaction to this type of level for the first time is always fun. There's such a horizon with SMW ROM hacking. As, as soon as we want to, we can change the game and make more standard stuff like this and still like express a different kind of challenge. Absolutely. Schema Tuna, upper right-hand corner on a read right now. I don't know if it's... Well, actually, I don't know if it's a read. No, they seem to have been here before. I believe Schema Tune has made it to the bubble jump. Well, it's not really a bubble jump, but the, the bomb bubble. Someone... One of the... One of the creators I respect most in the Kaizo community... Uh, Lazy, uh, who you may know from Odd Sands, South Point Hotel, uh, Biotoxin, uh, one of the one of the legends in the community, uh, really likes to talk about the idea of the line between Standard and Kaizo uh, fading, um, or if yeah. not fading, intentionally being blurred. Yeah. And when I see levels like this, and some of the tricks and setups being used in this as a standard that's what it looks like to me mm -hmm. you know standard designers using kaizo style setups um yeah and kaizo <laughs> designers toning themselves down and making standard setups like 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 i said before like it doesn't i think maybe it was more back in the day it, it does not have to be kaizo versus standard you know what i mean and i think on both sides of the fence it can maybe feel that way sometimes, and uh, there's so much room in the middle that, like, it does not have to be that way, like, at all whatsoever. It's really cool to see it, you know, come out. Like, this is a standard level. It has a chuck gate in it. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it standard levels with chuck gates would have gotten you banned from SMW Central, you know, four years ago. Yeah, we have to accommodate for the the, the rising skill ceiling. That just uh, a four out of ten difficulty is not what it used to be, and players with more access to training materials and knowledge 
are just just getting better. Like I, I'm, it's it, it has been such a personally, it has been a great ride, right? To just watch that develop and just to see who makes the plays and 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 who makes hacks that are really impressive. Like I've seen that in just the time Rom Hack Races has been around. Mm -hmm. Well, we talk a lot about the about all the players leveling up. Uh, and everyone getting stronger and better as a player. Creators are stepping their game up too. True that. In a True big, that. In a big, awesome way. I like too how standard hacks. Not to say that things like Invictus aren't. I mean, it's great. We love Invictus. The 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 chocolate type stuff. It had definitely has a place. But I I kind of like how standard hacks. There, there's such a bar. Invictus creates such a bar to jump with, with just the customization, the quality, the artwork, and we see this this rise in very pretty, cinematic, graphically intense hacks. Um, and speaking of that, uh, well, I'll mention that in a minute. Um, but I like how I was just gonna say I like how Standard rolls that back a little bit, where you don't necessarily have to make the most Invictus graphic-looking hack in the world. It just is about you know the 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 level design and and the types of obstacles you have, but I wanted to mention um, if y'all haven't seen the trailer for Idol, Idol's oh my gosh. new hack. Oh my god! Wow! Yeah, can we talk about that for a minute? Because that there is some stuff in that trailer that I haven't even seen before. Some ideas just in the trailer. That I'm like, wow, holy cow! The one thing I noticed that really was neat, uh, Schema Tuna, nice try. Uh, the one thing I noticed that was awesome was. There was, in one point in the trailer, there's a Hammer Brother platform, uh, a flying Hammer Brother platform with spikes on the bottom. And I was just like, whoa, like, it's so you can't hit it from below and kill it. I've never seen that before. That was really cool looking. The graphics are neat. Um, th it's going to be a good one. Yeah, Idol's Hack is going to be splendid. I just put Doc a link to yeah, the trailer. Put that trailer in chat. Thank you. Yeah, check yeah. that out. Venus UXO is going to be... It's gonna. You have to wait for it. It looks like it's gonna be coming out at the end of this year. But who boy, is it gonna be worth it? I've also heard rumors that you mentioned Anonymous Bloodlust earlier. When the when the new Anonymous Bloodlust hack is coming out, uh, I've heard I've heard rumblings that we are approaching. <laughs> oh, that's good. I uh, I'll I'll be I'll be uh, I'll claim it for moderation. I've been looking for I've been looking forward to this hack for some time now. Absolutely. No. Um We are just we're we're spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> we're spoiled. I'm lucky we're lucky that Kaizo is there's a lot of people. Like Kaizo just has a lot of people involved with it and that's a beneficial thing. One of the other things that really helps me, uh, we this this I don't want to say the stigma, but there's the barriers that were artificially put up between Kaizo and every other type of Mario hacking, um, on both sides. That going away is great for everybody, because yeah. not only does it open up it opens up people to try new things, both coming from Kaizo to Standard and from Standard to Kaizo. But we're seeing more and more some of the some of the best creators in the community flex in a way that just feels right. Like this is the natural progression of things. This is the direction things are going in. It feels like a mature art form. Totally. That's a good way to put it. There's a there's a there's a type of mature feeling about it. I I for one appreciate make you know the 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 makers who have been willing to bridge those gaps a little bit because like I mean I get it. It was for a time I at least I felt that there was a sort of a perception of like standard versus Kaizo. You know that the, a lot of the standard makers had been doing this for a long time and had put in a lot of work. Here goes Schema Tuna in the upper right for the win. Didn't get the slope Ooh. speed, rough. But um, you know, a, a lot of a lot of a lot of makers, uh, you know, people like like Lazy or people like uh, G Breeze or World Peace had been doing this forever. And then all of a sudden, here comes Johnny Come Lately, Kaizo, 
you know, kind of hogging up the spotlight a little bit. Never, oh, Kaizo, Kaizo, look at these Kaizo makers. They're so great. They're so great. And, like, I, I, I feel that, you know? Like, I, I feel that, like, yeah, that would kind of make it seem like, okay, well, everyone's down for Kaizo now. Like, but people like Gbri, you know, World Peace, they've been here forever putting things that Kaizo uses foundationally. And I think those makers, you know, they deserve the, the, the praise and the recognition. And I'm very glad to see both standard, you know, longtime standard friends and make and Kaizo people meeting in the middle a little bit more and, and, and coming to understand each other. I feel like some standard makers have kind of come around to understand Kaizo. Kaizo players and makers have come around to understand standard a little bit. And I would love to see that grow and thrive because... You know, Kaizo is, I mean, you know, as much as I say it, I have ridden this wave myself, but Kaizo is a kind of Johnny come lately, come to town, new sheriff in town sort of thing. Mario hacking has been around a lot longer than that, and there are makers who have put in a buttload of time, longer than me. You know, we stand, not, not, that, I'm, not that I'm the gold standard or anything, but just that I, I too stand on the shoulders of giants, and I, I like that those makers can have their names recognized and be a part of... Yeah. The, the 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 giant Super Mario World ROM hacking that there doesn't have to be a standard versus Kaizo Cold War anymore. I, I, I hope to, to to bridge that gap as much as possible. Real quick, really unfortunate for Nathan who made it to the up toss and then threw threw the shell up and it clipped the corner of the on off switch and bounced and slid right off it. Oof. I think we're gonna get some clears. Nathan and Schema Tuna are like right here. They really are. Schema knows what's up, yeah. too. Yeah, Schema Tuna, definitely. They're here. They just need to reset the bomb and get that right slope speed in there. And there it is. Oh, every, nice. Every single racer has checked for those blocks. Uh, that is smart, honestly. That's great presence of mind from literally everyone. <laughs> I like how you can't just decide that it's a lost cause and throw yourself into a muncher here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it imagine just you giving to... the player a muncher to just be like, oh, you could just throw yourself into the muncher if you want. Like, if you just really don't believe. <laughs> They're trying for it. Oh, Schema Tuna. Got it. Oh, good job. Good job. First week. Yeah, the suspicion. You know, you want to have it. Nicely done. Schema Tuna. Well played. Some great moves tonight. Mm -hmm. You do develop that sixth sense. Something... Yeah, that's suspicion. You have you like have to have it. If something is too good to be true, even in a standard level, it probably is. Especially if it's especially if it's an E rated level. Players have the radar for this now. It, it's it's impressive. Speaking of G Breeze, you're the one that, that brought them up. I don't know how many people know this, but the when we rate levels here at Romhack Races, um, we use a for for our Kaizo levels, which are 95 plus percent of the levels we race here at Kaizo. We use the standard scale that we created for ourselves: um, length of longest section. Hardest trick to figure out, hardest trick to execute. And we average all those to make our score. Standard levels don't play by the same rules that Kaizo does. And need their own difficulty scale to kind of better reflect how hard they actually are. World Peace and G-Breeze really wrote the... I don't want to say the book, but they wrote the rubric that... A lot of a lot of people use to measure standard level difficulty, uh, including us here at Romhack Races. So, uh, for a standard level, um, instead of going one to ten, it goes one to five E D C B A. And the way that works is that from one to five is basically how hard is the level. Uh, and when you get to a five, what you're basically saying is this level is extremely advanced. From there, the letters are about length. 
So when you get to five, how do you go harder than a five? Well, you make it longer. So a, I believe I can pull the scale up, but I believe the way it's measured is that a an E is considered a long gauntlet level, which is what we have here. D is twice as hard as E. C is twice as hard as D and B and A and so on. So I don't know if there's ever been a level higher than D that has ever been put in front of a player and expected to be done RTA. Yeah, I'm trying to think like where like that which can eternal die would <laughs> fall on that scale. That which eternal die, I think... So the description that uh, G Breeze and World Peace wrote for a uh, C level is twice as hard or twice as long as a D level, Uses utilizes obscure techniques and game mechanics, safe, safe states are very recommended. A B level is rated as intentionally extremely annoying, with any mistake resulting in death. So if I had to guess, I would say that that which can eternal die is probably somewhere between a C and a B. That makes sense. And if you're wondering what an A level looks like, an A level looks like item abuse three. <laughs> Impossible to do without tool usage. Yeah, as far as everybody gets in Kaizo and as much skill as people develop, you will not beat item abuse three. There, I, I mean, I've I've been wrong in the past. I am not. I do. I feel very confident in saying that there. It is impossible. For a human to beat item abuse three, it, it like actually cannot be done. We're at the point now where some of the old task levels that World Peace made, people are able to do bosses from them RTA, and that's impressive enough as it is. To be able it makes to me wonder get, if yeah. we'll ever actually see some cooler, cruel RTA clears, like some some level. I don't know if anyone's just RTA done levels of that, but it could happen. It. It would probably be the pinnacle of human play to do a cool or cruel level straight up RTA. Yeah. You know, and it's and it's one of those things that I sit and I think like, well, I mean, that's really impossible. Maybe I could do it, maybe somebody could do it. And then like I'm wait you know, I'm kinda waiting for that. Like, will we get to that point? Like I'm curious. I wanna see. Come on, Nathan. <laughs> you got this. A lot of pressure on that spiny jump. Shoutouts to everyone that saw this race through. I know for people that know what an E-rated level is, that's probably a very intimidating thing to see pop up, especially for us. And for those that didn't, uh, you probably saw everyone's reaction to it. So big, Now big you know. And now you know. Uh, big, big thanks to everyone who came out and gave this one a shot. Uh, even if you didn't get a chance to finish it, we appreciate everyone that comes out and takes a crack at our races. Um, also, something that we're actively working on that we have heard uh, a lot of people make requests for uh, is an easier and better way to go back through our archive. Uh, like I said, we're, we're over 190 weeks of these. And that's a lot of content from a lot that of, is some a lot of, of the, content. Wow. From some of the best creators in the community. You may not know that some of the people that you would look up to and that you look forward to seeing hacks from have had levels here at ROM hack races maybe a few years ago but they're still here um, we are actively working on a way that will make it incredibly easy to both search find and download any of the past levels that we have gone through so more details on that to come but it looks like we're probably ready to send this one over to nathan let's go celebrate for the clear
<clears throat> yeah, we can we can we can absolutely root on Nathan as they are finishing this up. They're very close. But uh, I'll get out of your way, glitch. Let you do the uh, <clears throat> let you do your carnal. Uh, oh. The level the levels themselves are not on SMW Central. Um, SMW Central doesn't um, doesn't encourage people to submit individual levels as submissions. Um, well, uh, some people have been kind of taking, <laughs> taking, stretching that one a little bit lately. But... Just, a, just a little bit. Um, just a little bit. Uh, but <laughs> back uh, in our early days, we actually did work on some collaborations where we would put hacks, put levels together into packaged seasonal hacks and put those to SMW Central. Um, as as the levels have gotten more complicated, and as creators have had a bigger need to kind of stretch themselves to make interesting things that's gotten a lot harder for us to do so for the most yeah, part that's with... a lot of work y'all putting mm -hmm. putting the collaborative stuff together is a lot of work actually it's it's mm -hmm. much easier if you just go play the levels and i'll tell you what not to interrupt but no. i'll tell you what another great reason to just play an individual rom hack race level i've said it before i'll say it again you get to win you get to actually win if you play a hack and you beat two or three levels, but then you decide it's really rough, then you don't you don't get to feel like you won, you know? Even though you beat two levels, like, who cares? You didn't beat the hack. With a ROM hack race level, you get to win, and that's important. It's going to get easier to do wins as we finish some stuff up, but hopefully within the next few weeks, that will become a lot easier to figure out. Um, Heck yeah. Thank but, you all so much. Yeah. Thank you, Doc, for, for no. doing this every week for us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Keeping us all in mind, keeping keeping the train running. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, I'll get out of your way, Glitch, to let you do your sign-off, but I want to let everyone know, thank you. Love y'all. Uh, it is an honor to keep doing this every week. And You know, I wouldn't mind. If you want to jump on co-commentate every week, that's super cool by me. I have no problem with that. I appreciate that. I may take you up on that in the future. I probably will for Race 200. Um, heck yeah that's gonna be fun sounds good but uh in the meantime glitch i'll let you do your sign off and i just want to say everyone stick around the next two months are going to be some of the coolest in the history of our community that's gonna be fun <clears throat> thank you all so much for hanging out you are kind and cool and wonderful check out romhackraces.com for more information about us and what we do jump on the discord talk shop with us go and follow the racers like nathan mg we're gonna send you over on a raid uh, thank you all so much for being a part of this. It's it's an honor. It really on and honestly is. It's an honor to make these for you every week. Uh, for my community friends, I will see you all on Sunday. We're gonna keep playing Raccoon Goku Mario World and uh, see what else see what else comes down the pipeline. Thank you all so much for watching. We're gonna raid Nathan. You matter. Your thoughts matter. Your heart matters. Your feelings matter. You matter to other people in your lives. You matter to me as human beings. You matter to the internet's number one long boy for it. And the people that matter to you in your lives would love to hear from you about that. We know black lives matter, LGBTQIA plus lives matter, indigenous lives matter, disabled lives matter. You too. And I'll see you all next week. Keep ROM hacking and uh, play more pinball. See you all next week. Peace.